All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. I am Josue Pavone alongside Cedric Maxwell. Plenty to get into. Celtics preseason. Training camp is almost over. Celtics 2-1. and one. Plenty to say. I'm sure Max has plenty to say about that. But first things first, let's get into what's going on in, uh, in out, out west with the uh, Golden State Warriors. And that, of course, is the uh, leaked footage. Uh, compliments to TMZ and, and whoever leaked it, of course. Um, Draymond Green, teammate uh, Jordan Poole getting into it. And uh, before things could even get into an actual fight, it looked like Draymond just punched him really bad, Max. We talked about it a lot um, the day it came out. But um, now the, the team has issued a statement. Draymond Green will uh, stay away from the team, keep, you know, keep to himself, as he put it, work on himself, rather, as he put it. Uh, wouldn't say exactly if he's going to see someone or talk to someone about this whole situation, but said that he will work on himself. And uh, Max, what, what's your reaction here? I mean, it looks like no suspension, but we don't know exactly how long he's going to be away from the team. Well, I, I, it's kind of funny, though, and you talk about leaked footage. Uh, when you said that, I, I start thinking in my mind, well, where was where's Joe Sway at? Well, was he anywhere in the vicinity <laughs> when they talk about Because, you know, we know how you are with the Draymond and me footage. You, you're on top of if that. It, if it was the NBA Finals, maybe, Max, maybe. I, I, don't know. I didn't, I, you know what? Leaked footage is a whole nother thing, and somebody found a way to make some money. Uh, they always tape all the videos uh, of practices. That's what they do. Uh, but then somebody turned around in the video room, and essentially, I heard Matt Barnes or somebody saying they, and maybe it was Perkins, saying they need to fire everybody in the video department because uh, obviously you got a, uh, you got the mold in there, and uh, you know that that kind of stuff shouldn't have really gotten out. And you know the punch is one thing, but the video is a whole nother thing, and uh, it just goes to show me when. I talked before, we were talking about Ime Adoka and what happened. And I had a former player, a Celtic player, tell me that they should have just swept under the rug. I said, the last secret in this world that I know of, that's when Osama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden saw a gun pointed at him. That's the only time there's been a secret. Everything else right now is, is up for grabs. So you can't have secrets. You got to let it out. But in that case, to get the footage out on him, that was detrimental. Uh, and it's forced them and it's forcing everybody to take a whole nother look at Draymond. If you said he punched him, that's one thing. But when you saw the video of the push by Jordan Poole, him coming up to Jordan Poole, Jordan Poole pushing him and him leaning into that punch, mm -hmm. that was that was a whole nother look for anybody in the NBA. And what does it do for Jordan Poole? I mean, you take a think about it, Joseph. Well, you've been out in the street before when a guy gets hit and gets knocked down. Everybody else is looking at him like, dude, whatever you got to say. Mm -hmm. And how a fan's going to react when um, Jordan Poole is on the floor. What are they going to say? Start chanting out something? So I understand the, uh, the situation. But I believe this. So many times we've seen it over and over again in sports. And I've seen guys have fights all the time in the NBA when I played. There was no big deal about it. It just went on to something else. Right. But the fact now that if he had broken that boy's jaw or whatever it was, that would have been a whole nother can of worms. Hey, remember Bobby Portis, uh, what he did right. uh, when he was in Chicago. Right. Uh, punched one of his teammates and broke his jaw. Mar and he was out for the remainder of the year. So, yeah. so, it, so it was just kind of crazy looking at it that way. Um, at first, it seemed like Golden State was saying, no big deal here, nothing to look at. But once the tape got down, yeah, that was a that whole other story. Right. That changed everything. And, you know, it's that's interesting because Steve Kerr said a lot of what you're saying right now, and that's, of course, how this thing got leaked. It should have stayed in-house. He said, and I quote, I've seen about 20 fist fights that have happened. And of course, he can be talking as a player. He can be talking as a coach. I mean, he was a part of one, right? Everyone knows the story from the the the, the last dance of what happened to him and Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan talking about he felt this big or this small uh, when he when he did that. He felt terrible. He called and apologized. <laughs> Jordan told the whole story and everything. So, I mean, Steve Kerr, like he said, he's seen a lot. So for this to not remain in-house, he's, he's furious. He's frustrated about it. 
But do you think that throughout after that press conference and everything, do you think maybe that frustration is, is misplaced a bit? I mean, he did express frustration about what Draymond did. He did express about, you know, how he's going to have to spend time away from the team. But it seemed like the, the, mo- the majority of the, of the presser was about how this thing is leaked and how there's going to be a thorough investigation. And of course, yeah. Draymond Green appreciates that. And he said that throughout his press conference as well. But he was also very apologetic, too. So, I mean, I, I you got to give. You got to give him some credit for that. But of course, just seeing the video and he talked about how we can't hear the audio. We don't know the context of the of the of the of the, you know, are the back and forth between them, what happened beforehand. It's only what a 20 second video to, you know, to what Draymond was saying. No one knows the full context of it. But again, seeing what you saw, you can't get past that. I'll, I'll ask you this. How long was your video that you took of me and Draymond? How long was that video? I mean, much- I showed the full context of it. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I missed anything. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, so you were there for all that, and right. uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm thinking back now, man. Maybe I was lucky. <laughs> you, know, you see, yeah, exactly. Like this would be like if it, if it was like a five second clip of Draymond wow. just in your face, and no one knows the context, and people thinking, whoa, like. You know, did he hit him? Did Max say something? Did he say something? Beyond, you know. But no, you got the full context of the video. But then again. Even if there's no there's no audio, so that you can't get the full context of it. Even if you were to show a three minute video with the fight being, you know, at the end, just where you got everything. And for our listeners and uh, viewers right now, you know, go back and see Joe Sway's, uh, you know, <laughs> infamous, you know, <laughs> Cedric this, Maxwell Draymond. This is gonna be about that. Why? Well, because, because, I mean, because, because it is because, Draymond, but yeah, well, because I mean, you're saying one is Draymond. And then two, you're saying that you had the video and you had the audio, and even you went further and got me with you for it. Max, you're making it sound like you you punched Draymond in the face. Like it was, it's a completely different altercation. I mean, I get what you're saying. It's but. Essentially, was 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 what was going on was that I had said something about Draymond Green when it came down to what he was doing, his antics. Well, you and, and you and Gary too. And, and, people, and remember this, he said, "I said, well, if he had done that during the eighties, he got knocked up out." Mm. Well, he got word of that, and uh, he just he kind of just went he he went off he went postal, and I was just saying, and, and then turn around and look, see what he does, <laughs> and you know, I, I I looked at another video, and they actually showed Isaiah Thomas, formerly with the Celtics. And uh, yeah. he said, man, you don't, he said, I don't care what it is, you don't punch a teammate like that. He said, dude on the street, yeah. And then he said, Jordan Poole, he said, you need to defend yourself. You need to have your hands up. But you don't think about that happening when you have a teammate coming right. at you in that way. You don't You don't even look at it that way. And yeah, especially, especially a guy. Especially a push especially like a that, too. Who, especially right. a guy who's a star player. But you also have to identify the person that you're talking to, that he might be a little, you know, Eddie Murphy had it one time, might be a little crazy, deranged, <laughs> something on. And, and there, Draymond, Draymond is Draymond is stupid smart. That's what I'd call it. You know, he 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 is he's he's amazing when he focuses on and then and then his brilliance, almost like Rondo. Rondo same way, just brilliant, smart, brilliant, dumb. You know, you get to the point where you, you you go over the top and then it's like, then you're trying to bring that person back. You know, Rondo's my guy and I've seen some of the things that he said over the years and and, and it's like, he's brilliant. But it, then sometimes it's just idiotic when you listen to some of the things that, that might be said. So for the team to say, he's going to be away from practice for a couple of games. But what, what, what does that mean? Well, not even. He just said just a, a, an X amount of time, like a, a, just away from the team. I mean, go home, go home. Days. And take, but you know that that is. But well, they said a few they, days. They said a few days. Well, but they didn't well, say a few coaches, games. They say a few coaches games. Coaches always coaches always say this. The worst thing you can do with any guy, a player, is to not let him play. And basketball is Draymond's identity. So for them to take that away from him. Maybe it might be something different, but you're going to see there's going to be repercussions on what happened with that throughout the league when Draymond is in those situations. 
Is there anything that someone can say that to cross the line to warrant that? Like, is there? Do you are you curious as to what what the audio is since, since Draymond's mentioning it, and since you know, no one no one has that part of it. Everybody everybody defended Jordan Poole though. You know, Steve Kerr defended Jordan Poole. So right. he didn't didn't do anything. But I'm asking you, Max. I'm asking you. Like, is there is anything there that he could have said that can be said? That's for me, that. For me, no. There's not. But you're also asking the guy, you're talking to a guy who went in the stands in Philadelphia. So you, I, I, I don't know. There, there's there's a trigger point, I think, for everybody. Anybody, anything can be said, and there's a trigger point. And whatever he said, obviously, was a trigger point. I mean, the, the walking up on him, he thought about it, then came back to him, walked up on him, and then, you know, Jordan Poole had pushed him out of the way, but Jordan Poole wasn't ready for the nuclear response. Right. I mean, Draymond leaned into that. I mean, the, the back foot was was off the ground. <laughs> that's how he punched. He put all his body into that. And that's where you can really hurt a guy you know, with those kind of punches. How do you, how does this team move forward from this? I mean, Steve Kerr was flat out asked, has the trust been compromised? When you think about what's happened in the past, Draymond getting himself in trouble, Draymond getting himself suspended during the NBA finals for, you know, kicking someone where you're never supposed to kick them. I mean, he, in, in Steve Kerr's response was no comment. He, he couldn't well, flat out say if the trust has been compromised or not. I don't, you know what? I think you look at what Draymond Green has done over the years. So if trust wasn't compromised then, how's trust compromised now? If you get kicked out of an NBA finals game, and everybody said, oh, we would have won it if Draymond would have been playing. And you get kicked out of that game. Trust was compromised at that time. Some of the right, but you would say it was regained, you know, after how that. You, how you regain it? You don't, you have. You win you the championship, Max. They're coming off a championship. You never regain trust. There's always a limitation when you look at somebody. It's like, like if you had a dog that bit you, you would never trust that dog again. You'd be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, no, no, you just don't forget. You could trust you know, it but you always don't keep a leery eye on that person. And I think that was the same thing that happened when, with the eBay situation. Trust was eroded. Trust was compromised. And so the Celtics decided that they had to make a move because of that. You think he was asked He was asked to stop whatever he was doing? You think that part of this, is, this that, that report is true? I don't know enough about it to comment on it, and I won't. All I know is that it was a, a situation that the Celtics felt that they had to make a move. And for the most part, it seems like everybody else is saying, well, they did their due diligence. They did their homework. They talked to Ime. And the biggest thing, everybody can say whatever they want to say. Ime agreed to have this suspension done or he could have fought it. And he didn't fight it. Yeah, and that's true. Why, why wouldn't he fight it, Josue? We're, we're in the street right now. Somebody came up to you and said, you did something and you didn't do it, would you fight it? And Probably. most brothers we know would say, I, it, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. But if they got video of you, they Show, yeah, give me with, the, with the receipts. Right, where the receipts. They're like, yeah, you know, that's your thing. Just way in the street. Where the receipts at? Well, <laughs> show me what happened. So, so that would be my take on that. That's my thing? Receipts is my thing? All right. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. I guess that's true. You're good. You're good with that. Hey, we're reporters, man. We gotta have receipts. You know, it's important. It's, 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 it's what. Uh, it's a big part of this thing. Uh, the Celtics, though, man, they're looking pretty good throughout this preseason. I mean, I know it's preseason, as we always say year, you know, at this time of the year. But with everything going on, you have to say, man, this team is looking pretty damn good um, just from the very beginning. And one of the the, the the bright stars from this game, from this team, it's it's got to be, of course, Jalen Brown, his hot star, but also. It's Sam Hauser. Man, this guy is on a tear right now, Max. Uh, he Sam was top five scores in the NBA for a little bit there. And, and, and right now, he's, he's not showing any signs of slowing down. You know, knocking Sam down Hauser. three points. Yeah, knocking Sam down Hauser. those shots. Yeah, Sam Hauser is a shooter. He's a scorer. The only thing you're going to have to worry about now, can you insulate him on the defensive end? That is going to be the key. Uh, can he stay on the floor defensively long enough that he's not a liability? But if you think about uh, Duncan Robinson down in Miami, one yeah. of the best shooters out there. But when it I came knew everyone was going to compare it to him. I knew yeah, it. When, 
yeah, when they well, it's it's a great comparison because he's a great three point shooter, but defensively, oh, because he, you're going to say because he's white. No, no, no. <laughs> No, one of our, it was funny. He's a white shooter. One of our (laughs) listeners on our podcast said that about me. He said, Max, it always has, he always brings up race. What (laughs) what does that mean? That means, let me, let me break it down so everybody understands this. When somebody says that to you, that means they're white. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> About ninety percent of the time, I can't. No, it's not. No, it's no ninety percent of the time. That it is always hundred. That's hundred percent. Hundred percent of the time, that's a white guy who would never. <laughs> never gonna hear a black dude being like, "Yo, why you got to make things about race?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a white guy would say, "God, you're always bringing up race." Uh, okay. <laughs> Possibly because you've never walked in anybody's shoes like that to understand right. that most things right. are. You've never yeah. had to really think about that. Right? Our racial in context. Yeah. I mean, so if you want to get into <laughs> me like that, like, dude, really? Is that, is that what you said? So for you to say that for me, that just reminded me of looking at some of the comments. That, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that he would take his time to listen to us, but also understand that if you say that to me, then I already know where you're coming from and I know who you are. Right. Right. <laughs> you I say never, I, I like I like I would never you, say that though. I would never be like you make everything about race. <laughs> well, uh, well, that's what he said, but I'm just saying, and you're saying to me, tell me, just say, say, oh, 90% of the time he's white. <laughs> Hell no. I uh, then I thought about it. I thought uh, about it again. Uh, yeah. uh huh, no. You want you know what? Let's, let's get let's get our, let's get our line real quick. A uh, hundred. <laughs> Uh, hundred. That's a hundred, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. But but we do appreciate the fact that he listened to us and he subscribed. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Appreciate all our listeners. <laughs> but that's funny he said that though. But yeah, but go ahead. What, what, so yeah, go ahead. Go back to your comparison. <laughs> well, Duncan Ro- well, Mauser, Duncan why, Robinson. Well, Duncan Robinson is a guy who can shoot the heck out of the ball. Miami gave him about twenty million dollars a year, and then all of a sudden they put him on the bench because he's a defensive liability. Teams hunted him down. So yeah. your offense better be be extraordinary. Extraordinary. Uh, you know, if you're going to stay in the lineup and and if you're that much of a liability. Do I think Sam Hauser is that li- much of a liability? I don't know. I haven't seen him enough defensively, but I would if I looked at him, I would judge and watching him. He held his own. I think he hustles, he busts yeah. his arm. But I think he's limited in his scope with his foot speed. He's 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 slower. So sometimes teams hunt you down. Yeah, that's true. But if he can if he can, you know, remain consistent on that part of the floor, especially okay. in that second unit, he could be a okay. he could be a threat. You know, he could be a weapon for the Celtics moving forward for sure, man. Uh, I think this is legitimate. Yeah, I think he is. He's the legitimate shooter. Uh, you know, it, there's nothing about him that is bogus when it comes to his shot. Um uh, you know, I, I can't wait to see a little bit more of Marcus. Uh, one thing that happened the other day. How about Malcolm? Talk, we got to talk about him, too. The, yeah, Malcolm is good. But one yeah. thing I want to touch on, and this is the Eme effect, which I want to see down the line. I remember talking to Eme Doka about Marcus Smart. And there are times when Marcus, was, it was in the exhibition game. Marcus had a layup, and then came down and wanted to do an and one and throw an alley-oop to somebody behind him. And two guys collided, and the ball goes out of the bounds. Ime Adoka told me, said, I said, how do you deal with that with Marcus? He said, I won't. He said, I told Marcus, I give you one of those a game. After that, no more. No more, yeah. That is one of the, the effects that I want to see how is that going to manifest itself. When you think about Ime not being there, his relationship with Tatum, his relationship with mm-hmm. Brown. Away from everything else, I'm just talking about the basketball side of it. That is one thing that I want to see if the Celtics can conjure up somebody who's going to have that leadership role when it comes to Tatum and Brown and Smart. Yeah, especially with late game execution. But I think someone like Malcolm Brogdon can help out with that. You know, it could be that voice of reason and, and be that guy that says, hey, look, I know I haven't been here 
you know, that long, but I, I'm trying to win a championship. And I, and I think he he's earned that respect in that regard, just, just from his playing career itself. And I love what he had to say about him and Marcus Smart being the best defensive backcourt and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you, Max, especially when it comes down to the late game execution, you know, how's Joe Mazzula going to approach things, you know, who gets the ball down the stretch if Tatum is hot, if Jalen Brown's on this tear that he's been on right now, that carries over, which I think it will, you know, I think there's a lot to be said about that. Mm-hmm. Max. Jalen's going to go into the season, you know, he's, he's really focused right now. He's dialed in. I feel like he's looking like he, he's trying to be the, the, the top guy in the Celtics. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I really don't. I just think that he's just going to really spread his wings this season and, and, and have, a, have a great start. You know, you're right about that. Let's not, get it it too, right? Let's not get it confused. The better Jalen is, the more he's going to push Tatum. And I think that's a good thing for this team. That's a great way to look at it. Competition, but it's always that alpha guy staying ahead of the other guy. And that competition sometimes can wear on you, but sometimes can make you grow. Uh, Hopefully in this situation, that will make them both grow even better as players. I can't wait for it, man. I can't wait to, to, to see them play the, uh, the the real games, you know, the the ones that, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like seeing what the second unit looks like right now, but you know, mm-hmm. I think we're about ready to see to see what this team is made of. You know, but there's some guys, other guys that stood out to me as well. I like Noah Vonley right now. I think he can um, he can maybe carve out a role right now with 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 um, you know with with uh, Robert Williams now with Luke Cornett. Mm-hmm. It looks like he may need another week or so. So I like the way he's the way he's uh, progressed here, and and I think he could actually get some minutes. Well, the, you know? the guy who was more interested in me was Blake Griffin, and watching him in limited. What do you think of Blake? Yeah, I, I did. I like what he brought to the table. He is not the leaper over a car anymore, a Kia, whatever it is. He's not doing that. Right. But his basketball IQ for what he brings to this team, I think is going to be good. Remember this, what people have said. He was, he led the league in taking charges. And because of that, you have Marcus Smart taking charges, Brogdon taking charges. You know, Blake Griffin taking charges. That's another weapon on the defensive end when guys drive towards the basket. Right. So his his um, watching them shooting, um, he's going to be a spot shooter. I think he's a reliable enough spot th- shooter from the three-point line that he can keep people honest. Um, so, yeah, I like what he I – lo- I love his basketball IQ and what he brings to the table right now. Yeah, he's also a good passer. I think that's yeah. a, that's another part yeah. of this too. Yeah. He, he understands. Blake Griffin understands a complete package when it comes to playing the game, and, and that I love about him. And finally, Max, what's your take on um, on the on the head coach, on the interim head coach, the young coach, youngest coach in the NBA right now, Joe Mazzulla? What do you think so far? Still learning. It's a still learning process for him. Uh, his relationship with the players. It's, it's really funny when you move, people say, we move over sitting on the front of the bench. He was behind the bench. Mm-hmm. So, right. so his, his advance to where he is now is, is stupid crazy. You know, to go from being behind the bench to look at him as a video guy, should we challenge? Should we ch- I think he was the guy who had the uh, video in his hand, uh, the iPad in his hand, see if we should challenge him or not. Now he's right. gone from to being making all the decisions. That to me is an amazing leap. And um, I think right now it's still incomplete. He holds himself with a lot of posture and character. I like that. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, how about the fire? I haven't seen that yet. You know, the fire in the yeah. belly. You, you know, you yeah. challenge, challenge a, uh, you know, uh, a referee with a call. Right. Or, 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 so oh, no, or, or, or on the team, right? Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be that point where you have to, you know, crack the whip. You know, it's going to be yeah. interesting to see how that how that unfolds. So, yeah. yeah, so so if I was giving Joe Mazzullo something right now, I said it would be a, a incomplete, something that Joe Sway used to get a lot of times with his papers when he was at Mecca, you know. Wow, wow. <laughs> like, I'm bro. just tossing it out there, bro. What a way to just throw a shot at me for, for no particular reason. All right, cool. Lob a hand grenade if you can. <laughs> I had a couple of incompletes in my day. I mean, I'm not saying judge, I mean, grade the guy. I just wanted to hear you. What do you think so think, far? Because there's nothing really, again, I haven't seen enough. I'm looking at the players. I'm looking at their plays. They look fundamentally kind of the same. 
ISOed and, you know, pushing the basketball. But I, I'm just trying to see when you always look to see a mark that a coach has on a team. What mark is he going to put on this? What imprint is he going to put on this team? I think that's going to be huge. You know what's a good sign? A good sign is when someone who's only been there for about 24 hours is asked about it. And he's like, man, this guy, you know, he's 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 a, a great combination of funny and he's so intellectual. And he's got everyone that's you know locked in and wants to you know, hustle for him. And you, you're seeing how everyone around the, the locker room is joking around. And, and Blake is just fitting right into that. You know, he's been yeah. the guy who's just been joking around and stuff and also knowing how serious things are and how the goal is. And, and he knows what's going on. Obviously, he's seen the what's what, what's been happening the last few <laughs> weeks. But he's like, man, it seems like nothing's even happening. Like everything is everything is smooth right now. And I, I, I like I love this coach so far, even well, though I haven't been here that long. Yeah, there's a there again. I haven't seen. I, I'm going to say it again. I haven't seen enough uh, to judge Joe in any kind of way. Uh, so, so I'll get a chance, and 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 Celtic Nation to get a chance to see what this team does when it hits those really rough patches when we know they're going to come. It's not like you like you don't know. No, it's it's going to you're going to hit some of those rough patches right now. You know, you're, you're you you are coming into a situation where you have your safety valve and you have taken a lot of the pressure off this team by going to you and now they're putting it in your hands. So, so we'll see how he deals with that. Uh, again, I haven't had a chance. I'm sure we're going to have a chance to speak to him on, uh, on air. I haven't even done that yet. So uh, I'm kind of, uh, kind of excited. I'm, I'm excited for him optimistically. Are you going to give him the max pep talk or not? I don't do that. Uh, Max doesn't give pep talks like this. So you didn't give Ime the Max pep talk? No, what he what pep talks? Are like, no, uh, those aren't. I I, I don't I don't wow. interview, No, I never have. But that is why not the OG. Your number is in the it's in the rafters for crying. That was that was for guys like Tommy Heinz, who would bring the coach over and they'd sit down and they talk and that, no, that's that's just yeah. not my personality. If I remember Tommy asked, used to do that with Marcus. I like that. Yeah, he used to do that I mean, if they ask me a question, you know, then I'll I'll give them my input. But I'm right. not volunteering my services saying, hey, you should do this and do that. You know, last time I said something like that is when I had did my commercial and I said, you know, you know, in my days, <laughs> you know, yeah, you'd be knocked a blank out. So I, I, that. Well, that, that was the only input I gave to a player, so I, I I don't even know what else to say. I think that was uh that was the the explicit the explicit version of that video lasted about a good thirteen hours online. I think. Yeah, people <laughs> loved it. They they're like, oh my god, your video! And the guy wants to. It's really funny. He wants to do some kind of Halloween video with me. So <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine what that's. I can imagine what that's like. It's that time of year, Max. The leaves, the leaves are falling, you know? No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. That's the good. way. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, Max. How's that? Uh, before we get up out of here, man, how's how's Charlotte? I, I'm, I know you're happy Charlotte's to be great, right man. Now. You're looking behind me now. You know, you see the uh, few white clouds behind nice me. Sunny I've, day. Been, I've been popping in now the sun, but uh, beautiful down here. I'll be down here for the next week before I get ready to come back to Boston. I think I have an autograph signing next Sunday in Boston. Uh, and and then getting ready for that first game with Philly. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Uh, the Montreal game, uh, radio is not covering it, so uh, that's gonna be kind of it for me. There you go. All right, that's right. Last preseason game is uh, coming up this upcoming Friday, and then it's the uh, opening of the regular season. Man, I cannot wait. Like I've been saying this entire episode, but the Celtics look good. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Draymond Warriors situation. We'll keep you posted, of course. Follow us. Uh, you know, subscribe, give us a review, you know, come on, hook us up guys. If you haven't already, the Cedric Maxwell podcast, we really appreciate it, man. But until then, uh, until next week, guys, what, what, what do we do? We're we going to, uh, keep it a hundred. Keep, keep it on the, we keep it on the damn hundred. Keep it so on we, a hundred. We're going to tell you exactly how we feel. Even if Absolutely. you are, even if you do say, well, you know, Max is all about you, always about race. I'm going to still keep it on the hundred. Because he keeps it a hundred. That's why it's about race, David. That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. All right, bro. All right. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>